check this out. It's a farming cube. Believe it or not, this mini 4x4x4 area contains just around 14 farms, producing roughly 45 different items. There's a small entrance on the side of the cube where you can manage all the different farms. It's very dense, compact, and the peak of efficiency. You are fitting 14 farms into a 64 block space. Similarly, by placing a wooden plank, I am storing one plank in one block. However, if I place an oak log, I'm effectively storing four planks in one block. So four blocks for the space of one. But how many blocks can fit inside one block? Granted, you've probably never needed this kind of storage, but if you wanted maximum efficiency in containing stuff, how many blocks could you fit into a 1x1x1 area? It's a strange question for sure. Minecraft is filled to the brim, pardon, with many different containers and methods to hold items. If we want to fit the most blocks in one block, we have to maximize efficiency in every way possible. So let's do it, and please do consider subscribing. It really helps out a ton. The first thing we need is obvious, a container. If we want to fit a lot of blocks into one block, we are going to need a container of some kind to start off with. So what's the best container to use? This may seem pretty straightforward, but it really isn't. There are many different containers to choose from, each of them storing a different amount of items. Jukeboxes can store one disc, item frames can store one item, furnaces can store 192 items or 3 stacks, hoppers can store 5 stacks, droppers and dispensers can store 9 stacks, and finally, barrels, chests, ender chests, and shulker boxes can all store up to 1,728 items, or 27 stacks. However, this begs the question, which of the four do we use? You probably think it doesn't matter, but you'd be wrong. Generally, shulker boxes would be better, as they're transportable and breakable with pistons and overall very versatile. But in our case, it would be far smarter to use a chest due to the following. For starters, shulker boxes open upwards, making their entire frame larger than one block. Chests also do open, but their animation can go through transparent roofs, like stairs and slabs, and it doesn't collide. But I think the most crucial difference is the fact that we can put shulkers inside of chests and not the other way around. By using chests as the base, we can effectively fill it to the brim with 27 other chests, or shulkers, as they have the transportability. However, if we use shulkers as the base container, we can't fill it with chests unless we're in creative mode. So, hopefully, you'd agree that the chest is by far the best container to begin with. This raises our block total to already 46,656 blocks in one block plus another one chest, plus another 27 shulkers, assuming you filled every shulker box and then put it in a chest. And when I say blocks, I do mean blocks, so no items allowed. But what other tricks can we do to raise that already massive number? Well, with item frames, we can add two more blocks to our 46,684. Not a huge change, but if we replace the item in the frame with another full shulker box, then we can add a ton more items. In Minecraft 1.17, bundles were added to the game as a new Walmart shulker box. They can only hold a stack of items, and at first glance in our context, they seem completely useless. The main goal of the bundle, I assume, is to help with inventory management. But in our case, if you want to stuff our chest with the same stacks of an item, putting them in bundles doesn't really do anything. Or that's what it seemed like at first, but we'll get to the use of the bundle later on. Up next are piglins, which actually do help to some extent in a really surprising way. I didn't know this until I saw it in a Grian video, but baby piglins can actually hold up to 18 stacks of golden nuggets. And sadly only drop 9 stacks when they're killed, but that's still useful. If we put one of these in a minecart and ram it into our chest, we can fit 9 stacks of nuggets additionally to our chest items. But why use piglins when we can just use minecart chests? Minecart chests can hold 27 stacks of items, so why not just use them? Surely enough, using this probably overcomplicated system, we can cram minecarts with chests into our original chest. 
and as far as I'm aware, there isn't the limit to how many minecarts we can add. I mean, there probably is, but I don't know it. However, what I do know is that if you squash enough of them in and forget to add walls, they become their own kind of entity and actually move around without stopping. It's really cool, but also really useless. So, how many blocks is that in total? Assume we have our original chest, cram it with shulker boxes, put an item frame out the front, cram the chest with minecarts which all have shulker boxes in them, this leads us to a grand total of 48,414 plus 46,684x blocks, where x is the number of minecart chests. This total is massive, and you can see the total blocks as a function of minecart chests on this graph. Its growth is so steep, it's practically a straight line. If we add two minecart chests, the total blocks becomes 141,782. With 10 minecarts, that becomes 515,254. And with 256 minecarts, our total jumps to 11,999,518 blocks in one block. These numbers get huge fast but they can become even larger if we use a different block. Now that we've figured out how to store blocks, the next step involves deciding what blocks to actually store in the first place. Sure, we could just go with random blocks like carpets or slabs, but if we filled these minecart chests with planks, for example, and had 10 carts, yes, we'd have around 515,000 planks, but if we fill the minecarts with logs, we'd have technically four times that amount in planks, 2,060,000 planks in the same space for a different block. But just how efficient can we get? Back to our example, one stack of logs translates to 256 planks in one slot, and if we turn those planks into slabs, it becomes 512 blocks in one 64 area. But what if we use something else? If we use one stack of melon blocks and then mine them with a fortune 3 axe, each melon block gives around 8.5 melons, which translates to 544 melon seed blocks per stack of melon blocks. And here's where the bundle comes in. While the bundle is useless when it comes to storing a single stack, we can actually make it a sort of kit that can help us craft rails. Rails craft in groups of 16, which is ideal if you want to maximize the output. We can stuff a bundle full of the required materials for 9 rail craftings, or 144 rails, and use the extra slot for an ender chest, which can be mined for 8 obsidian. Each bundle results in 152 items, which would be great except bundles don't stack, making this approach and bundles worthless. If we fill a shulker box instead with the kit, it gets better, but still not good enough. With 227 items per slot, it's alright, but again, just over half of the melons total. On the other hand, if we cram a shulker box with just ender chests, we can get 8 obsidian per chest, or 512 blocks per stack. Not as good as the melons, but closer. But why use ender chests or melon blocks when we can use redstone blocks? Each redstone block becomes 9 redstone dust, leading to 576 blocks per stack. But we can do one better. Instead, we can use iron blocks. You may be thinking, what the hell can iron blocks do? Well, each iron block becomes 9 iron ingots, which aren't blocks, but each group of 6 iron ingots becomes 16 iron bars. As such, each stack of iron blocks becomes 1,536 iron bars. So combining that into our minecart chests, and we get a grand total of 1,119,772 blocks per minecart. Compared to our original formula, it's massive. With two minecarts before, our total was 141,782 blocks. But now, with iron bars, it becomes 3.4 million. With 10 minecarts, 12 million, and with 256 minecarts, we have a grand total 
of 287,822,878 blocks in one block. That is massive. And the coolest part, it's somewhat feasible too. But you know what else is cool? This can actually create a black hole. You see, the thing about black holes is that when a ton of mass is cramped into a very small space, it gets so dense, it becomes a black hole. Specifically, once its density exceeds 2 times 10 to the 19th kilograms per cubic meter. So, how dense does our one block have to be with 287 million iron bars? Well, to find that out, we just have to do some basic math. One cubic meter of iron's mass, according to Google, is 7,873 kilograms. One iron ingot, since it's one ninth, is by association 875 kilograms, and by that logic, each iron bar has a mass of 328 kilograms. So 287 million of those would have a mass of 94,441,881,843 kilograms. That is insanely massive, but actually not even close to the weight of a black hole. So how many minecart chests full of iron blocks would we need to get a black hole? This isn't too hard to figure out either. The answer is a whopping 54 billion 434,210,813 minecarts packed to the brim with shulker boxes full of iron blocks to then be crafted into iron bars. That number is immense, and maybe it can help you visualize the sheer enormousness and absurdity of black holes. But with all that said, that is how many blocks can fit into one block without collapsing the universe. I hope you have enjoyed, please do subscribe, thank you so much for watching, and as always, peace out, have a good one.